In today's video, we're gonna show you how to charge an AC system that is low on refrigerant. I'm gonna show you a couple of reasons why you can tell it's low on refrigerant, and then we'll move on to how to actually charge the system. This will apply for R22 as well as R410A. So let's get right into it. All right, so this is the system that we're working with. It's an old Lennox R22 system. Again, this will apply for R22 or 410A. We have our recovery tank. This is a friend of mine's house, so we're using recovered refrigerant. If you're using brand new refrigerant, it'll be in a green container for R22, and it'll be in like a pink container, I believe, for 410A. So you have options on the gauges that you choose to use. Normally in my past videos, you've seen uh, me using the regular needle gauges, and those are totally fine. Uh, this is a little bit more sophisticated setup, but really the biggest thing with your gauges is going to be the hoses. So if you're shopping for a set of gauges, uh, manifold and gauges, definitely spend the few extra dollars on these. These are about $100 for the low loss fittings. I'll show you in just a second how easy these hoses are to install. So I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing this. Um, some people are called a two pound technician because they don't have any of these items. They simply put in enough refrigerant to where they think it's okay. Another term is called uh, beer can cold. If this line is beer can cold, then you're probably good. So I'm gonna show you two methods. The first is doing it without superheat and subcooling. And the second method is a lot more dialed in with superheat and getting it really dialed in. So blue is your low side. This hose is gonna to go to the larger line. This is uh, called the suction line or the low side as well. But notice when I tighten this, we'll do it quickly here. We only let out a very minimal amount of refrigerant. And when we go to take that off, it'll do the same. It'll only let out a certain amount of refrigerant. Now, I'm not gonna do that right now, but towards the end of the video, I'll show just how little refrigerant comes out. So next we're gonna take our high side hose, same thing. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go inside and we're gonna turn the thermostat on. We're gonna make sure that this unit has run for about 10 minutes before we add the refrigerant so that we can check the um, pressures beforehand. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this on and we're gonna let this run for 10 minutes and then we're gonna check our pressures. Now, a couple of things that are good telltale signs that you are low on refrigerant is one, this line right here, the larger line could be frozen and the evaporator coil inside could actually be frozen. Those are good indicators that either you have a restriction in your air filter or you have low refrigerant. So for an R22 system, just to give you an idea, on maybe an 80, 90 degree day, our low pressure side should be about 60 to 80 uh, PSI on the low side. And the high side should be somewhere around 150, 175, somewhere in that area. So as long as we're within that area and that pipe is nice and cold, you're probably gonna be okay. But then we're going to show you not only how to do that, but how to check the superheat with our thermometer and our temperature clamps as well. All right, so let's say we just have a regular set of gauges, no clamps. Um, we're just doing this very basic R22 charge up. Now, this system has been running for 10 minutes. We grab this line. It's not super duper cold. That would indicate that we need to top off the system. That line should be, like I said, beer can cold for a very basic understanding of it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the middle line, the yellow one, and we're gonna hook it up to the liquid side of our tank. Now, this is a recovery tank. If you were charging a system with a brand new R22 tank, in order to get liquid, we would need to flip this tank upside down. What we're going to do is make sure that these are closed. We're going to open the liquid side of the tank. There's a tube that goes down, making sure that we're getting liquid out of this tank. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna purge our line, let a little bit of refrigerant out. Doesn't take much. We just don't wanna be introducing any air into the system. So now that our air has been purged out of that line, 
this line is open. All we're going to do is we're gonna slowly start feeding in refrigerant and you'll notice, you can notice the compressor change tone and the little sight glass, you can see liquid being fed in. Now you don't wanna do this super fast. Um, just let a little bit in at a time and then close it. Let it sit for maybe five minutes and then recheck and see how cold this line is. And again, the pressure that we're after is about 75 PSI on a pretty warm day. So that's kind of our target. We're sitting at about 60 right now. So we're gonna let that stabilize and then add this as needed. Now, in order to do this the professional way, we need to determine if we have a piston or a TXV for our metering device because that will determine if we're checking superheat or subcooling. Now this is a piston system, so we're gonna be checking superheat. If it was a TXV, then we would be checking subcooling. Now, in order to check the superheat, since we know that this system has a piston, uh, we need to take a few measurements. Number one is the indoor wet bulb temperature. Now there's a couple methods that you can do this. Uh, the way that I did it was with the use of this tool. Uh, this is a field piece pocket psychrometer. This tells us our wet bulb. The other option that you can do, you can take this and you can wrap a wet towel around it and put it in front of your return and that will give you your wet bulb temperature as well. But once you have that measurement, you use it in conjunction with the outdoor temperature and that will give you your target superheat. As you can see, we're sitting right at about 58 degrees and then we'll plug that into our chart and see what we've got. Well guys, as you can see, we're sitting at about 5.6 superheat. That's exactly where we want it. So this system is properly charged. We have nice heat coming out of the top now and we have super cold suction line. So that's exactly what we're after. Hopefully this has saved you hundreds of dollars being able to do this yourself, um, especially with R22. This stuff, um, most technicians will charge up to $200 to $300 per pound of R22 refrigerant. So being able to know this can save you so much money. Here's a tip when it comes to uh, removing your gauges. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the breaker off for our condensing unit. And you'll notice what happens here. The high side will start to drop and the low side will start to raise until we get to whatever pressure this equalizes at. Then we can go ahead and disconnect our two lines and this line will be less hard to remove because if you try to take this off while it's under pressure, um, it'll, it'll have a lot of pressure when you go to unthread that fitting. All right, so we've just about equalized here. We're gonna go ahead and remove the low side. See how quick and easy that was. Next, we'll remove the high side and it should be about the same. Just like that. That is the beauty of these low loss fittings. They're super compact and they're very easy to install and remove. Perfect for your average DIYer or someone who is getting in this field. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure and leave it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. If you'd like to see how you can save hundreds of dollars by maintaining your condensing unit, how the proper procedure of cleaning it, and what's involved, check out this video right here and we're gonna show you how to do that and save hundreds of dollars. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.